All of a sudden, that music hit, and I walked out, and I remember it just kind of hit me, and I was like, that's, that's different. So now he would be saying stuff, and I'd just be like, yeah, like kind of like, duh, yeah, yeah. What's bigger and better than being the WWE champion and the guy who disrupted years of a title reign? All right, we're good. All right, we are rolling. I just got yeah. fired. So we probably shouldn't even do this. Oh, <laughs> oh man, it, what a great time to be talking to you right now. <laughs> I, I, I guess. I don't know. I, I feel like I need to sleep still. But Oh, look, I, I have a three-week-old probably, baby. You want to talk saying, to me about you sleep? You probably feel like you need to sleep right now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but I feel like with Money in the Bank right around the corner, like I feel like this pay-per-view is, is just set up for you to win that briefcase. Well, you know, uh, somebody just reminded me this is the second money-themed ladder match I've been in, and we know how that one ended last time. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a shoe in. It's funny when you type your name into YouTube, I don't know if you're aware of this. Almost all of the top results are LA night, huge pop LA night, massive crowd reaction. No, I don't know this, but now I feel like I'm going to have to go check it out. Yeah. You're going to have to go see this. And I'm curious at what point did you start to realize like, man, I, I knew the crowd was making some noise for me, but this, this is really loud now. I can tell you exactly. Uh, it was back in March. We were in DC. Uh, Seamus and Drew were in the ring. And then all of a sudden, that music hit. And I walked out and I remember it just kind of hit me. And I was like, that's that's different. Um, but, but I was just thinking to myself, I was like, ah, they probably know him from up the road. Hagerstown's like an hour away. Maybe enough of them know. Then we went to Pittsburgh the next week. And we went to New York the week after that. And everywhere we went beyond there, it just continued to pick up more and more. And I was just like, okay, well, I guess it's not, I'm not from New York, not from Pittsburgh. So uh, maybe it's not that. And since then, it's just kind of picked up. LA got to a fever pitch, obviously. Uh, hell, uh, Triple H was out there doing a, a, a presser in uh, Saudi Arabia, and he's getting interrupted. So uh, something's happening. I don't know why. And maybe I don't even want to know why, uh, but for some reason or another, the, the people are demanding me. When you saw that footage of the crowd chanting LA night at triple H in Saudi Arabia, what was your reaction to that? Uh, well, first of all, I was, I was sitting in my hotel room in Saudi Arabia. So I wasn't even there. I wasn't even at, I wasn't even at the actual press event. So, um, somebody sent it to me on Instagram, I think. Actually, first, before they even sent it to me, I saw somebody else in my stories saying, uh, uh, they're chanting LA Knight's name at the thing. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. What it's probably like three people doing it. <laughs> then I see the video and I'm like, oh, damn. All right. All right, well, it's it's right there. Uh, so, so that was pretty wild. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm also the worst at... Um, at really letting something like that get to me. Um, like I can acknowledge it, yeah. but that's like, okay, that's cool. Now what? Um, so I, I, I love and hate that about myself. Cause I'm like, sometimes it's like, all right, why, why don't we just take a second to appreciate this? But I, for whatever reason, whether it's a flaw or a virtue or a mix of the two, I just can't. And I'm just like, all right, that's cool. Now let's continue on and make this better and bigger. But look, man, I texted you this the other day, like anybody with ears can hear you are like mega over right now. And the great thing about this is it just keeps increasing every single week when you go out there, it just keeps getting louder and louder. Yeah, but you have to remember there's a lot of people out there without ears. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious because I've, I've known you for a while. I've known you in the ring and out of the ring and you just have this magnetic personality this just this charisma that just oozes out of you what were you like as like a five-year-old oh man shy 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 kid um but i always wanted to be out of my shell i always like so um you know those hand mixers and it has like the little silver thing and you pull it off and yeah, yeah yeah your mom mixes some cake batter you can lick it or whatever i used to pretend to pretend those were microphones and uh i would it was big. My first tape I ever had was Thriller, Michael Jackson. So I would I would like stand there behind a door 
where I couldn't see anybody else. So in my head, they also could not see me and they also could not hear me. And I would stand back there and sing and do all this stuff until they came around and were like, what are you doing? And I was like, and then it freeze up. Super, super shy kid. Um, so, you know, a lot of this was, uh, you know, get to high school and all of a sudden you start to see, <clears throat> I mean, I'd been watching wrestling since I was a kid, but like now it was like the attitude era starting to pick up a little bit and you got the rock and Steve Austin and, and like those two guys really kind of fed me a lot of my confidence in high school. And, it, it, and a lot of it was fake. I was faking the hell out of it until eventually it kind of became more natural. Um, and so came out of my shell a little more after that, but I'm still, if I go into a room and I don't know people, I'll stay to myself for the most part. Unless I know a person or two, then maybe I'll go in and just talk some trash. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of people that say like, oh, I do see a little bit of rock. And we talked about this in our first interview. You sound yeah, a little you're, like you're, you're ruining my life, my God. Uh, <laughs> you said, I didn't even bring no, it up in that interview. You, was, you said it. Did I say it? I thought you, you said, said it. it. I don't believe this. This is bull. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I uh, so when I'm talking in my, like, I guess normal, I don't know. There's times where it, it kind of happens, but like, I don't know if I hear myself like, actually on tv i don't think it's i don't think it's there but like if you're talking to me now yeah maybe more now i, I don't know because because that's when so when i was watching the hero 10 years ago and i remember there's one particular scene we're walking through this jungle whatever and uh go figure the rock in a jungle um and so we're watching this and and you see people walking through the jungle and there's a voice and I was like, I think that's me, but it turned out to be him, or it might've been the other way around. I can't remember, but whichever way it was, it wasn't just me. It was the other people in the room who thought that like I was talking, but it turned out to be him, but it's just when I'm talking like this, but when I'm actually doing my stuff on TV, I don't hear it at all, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, so, so from those guys, th those guys were like bread and butter for me back in high school, um, where it was just like that, that kind of, that kind of took me out of this, like quiet kind of meek you know whatever stand to myself guy where like i actually i started to carry myself differently and like had like a different sense of confidence and whatnot after that um so yeah where are we there's going with a it? lot of there's a lot of fans that say man i love this la night character it's a throwback <clears throat> to like a, like a character that i watched in the attitude era and i don't know what it is i don't know if it's the way you cut the promos i don't know if it's the 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 swagger you have when you walk to the ring but there certainly is some sort of a throwback to that sure and, and and i could speculate on many reasons why it is and i don't really know i can't put my finger on it but uh i, I think maybe there is just something different uh or maybe something that's been lacking for a long time which is has always been kind of my view and why i guess i've never given up this whole damn time and just kept pushing mm -hmm. for 20 damn years where it's like i know i've got something to to give here i know i've got something to incorporate here and and uh <laughs> through through all the the no's and and well you know i just i don't know what else you're bringing to the table or blah 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 well i guess we're finding out now mm -hmm. uh so whatever it is whatever that quality is i can't put my finger on it but there's something so I'm sure you already know this, but LA Knight is the odds on favorite to win the men's money in the bank ladder match. And that's not just my opinion. That's a fact of life. No, that is the odds according to mybookie.ag. This video is powered by mybookie.ag, the premier place to bet on combat sports. So we're talking UFC, boxing, and yes, WWE. Because wrestling fans are always telling you who they think should win certain matches. Well, what if you could put your money where your mouth is? What if you could actually earn real money from your WWE knowledge? That's what you can do at mybookie.ag. So if you think that Cody Rhodes is gonna beat Dominic Mysterio, that's a match you can place a bet on. If you think that Seth Rollins is gonna retain his World Heavyweight Championship against Finn Balor, that is a match you can place a bet on. You can bet on all the matches for Money in the Bank, and more at mybookie.ag. And because you're watching this right now, there's a special welcome bonus for you. When you sign up and make your first deposit using the promo code CVV, you'll get a 50% welcome bonus. So if you put in hundred bucks, you'll get an additional $50 in there when you use the promo code CVV. So when you're placing a bet on Money in the Bank, you can walk away with your own Money in the Bank. 
Yeah, go to mybookie.ag, use that promo code CVV, and I mean, let's see. Let's see, can you, can you turn your knowledge into some actual cash there? And not everybody gets a second chance. And I don't, I mean, a lot of people know, but not everybody knows that you were in WWE developmental. You were in the PC 10 years ago, sure. didn't work out. You got another chance. What do you think led up to you getting another chance in WWE? Well, because I, when I when I got let go the first time, it wasn't because of talent issue, and that was made very clear to me. I, it was it was very much a professional issue. Uh, there was a perception with uh, me and the head coach at the time, and the way that things were going were not good uh, because I was poking the bear because things that were happening and the way things were going. Well, eventually he was out, and then. I was kind of floating around the ether here and uh, I'd run into some people and they were like, Hey, what do you think about coming back? I said, I'd love to come back. And uh, the only issue was since leaving with heat, I was kind of given the same offer I had the first time around and I was making more money where I was. So I was like, I'm going to stay here for a year or two, hang on to this. <clears throat> and so I did. And, and in the, for the immediate future, that was probably the best move. Long term, not the best move because I had quickly hit the ceiling financially, professionally, whatever where I was. And at some point it was like, all right, well, I'm going to have to take this short term downgrade and pay mm -hmm. because even though I'm making more here, I'm stuck. But if I take this downgrade here, eventually I can be well above here. And I just, that is, need to but that's so ironic because you were the world champion in that other place. Yeah, well, that didn't mean anything because about three <laughs> people were watching the show, apparently. So, uh... <laughs> but in, and when we talk about second chances, you know, you were on fire with LA Knight, Max Dupree happened, and then LA Knight came back. And I'm curious what the conversation with Triple H looked like when LA Knight was allowed to come back as we know him now. Well, let me just uh, go ahead and say this. I'm pretty sure I was, I was fired and it just hadn't officially happened yet. Um, um, but without getting into too many details, some things happened. I don't remember what it was, but some things happened. Uh, and then I had gotten a, uh, a, 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 a FaceTime. Hey, uh, you know, we, we want to keep you around. We want to do this, this, that, whatever. And uh, okay, cool. Good. So somehow I'd been saved from being thrown off the cliff. At least this is my interpretation of it. Sure. Maybe I'm incorrect. I don't know. Uh, and so eventually just things kind of worked out. And uh, I, I think that maybe again, maybe some of the testament to why things are working the way they are and the people reacting the way they are is because one of these was not me and I didn't know who it was. And one of these is very much just me. Like I don't have to think about LA Knight. I don't really have to dig in like what is this who am i what am i doing i just go and do because it's just me heightened you and i have been to a party together i think you've been to one of my parties i am a heightened personality at the party so like to me my personality on tv is a it's an amalgamation of me at a party and me in an argument and when you put those two together you've got la night when is dummy coming back? Oh, I've, I've considered it. I don't know. Uh, it, the it, people want it. Some people. Um, I would I'd probably 90% of people don't even know. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, if it came out organically, maybe, but I, I, I that's the one I don't never want to crowbar anything. So mm. it's all got to be kind of an organic thing. That, that's, that's one of the other things is like, I've never really forced I've never forced any lines. Um, I mean, now at this point, I've got kind of programmed stuff that's in there, here, there, whatever. But like in its origination and its original form, like I never, it, it was all kind of stuff that just happened. And it was like, oh, okay, that was cool. Let's keep that. Um, so could that come back? Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's just sprinkled in here and there. You never know. So how did, yeah, organically come about? So, uh, I can't remember the exact origin, but I know where, uh, we were at the performance center first time around, um, back in 2013, 2014 at the time, 
I do, uh, well, we'll get to get to that in a second. Uh, one of the coaches would like explain stuff to us when I was in his class and whatnot. And and when he'd talk to me personally and he'd be saying stuff, you know, some people will go, uh huh. Mm -hmm. I would keep just going. Yeah. Yeah. And he kind of like almost took offense, but like in a joking way where he's just like, you know, what, what do you, and, and so I leaned into that. So now he would be saying stuff and I'd just be like, yeah, like kind of like, duh. Yeah. Yeah. And so now I'm, one of the things that I was very quoted as saying walking around the PC back in 2013, and I don't even remember why, I have no idea why, but I would just be like, everybody. And I mean, everybody from top to bottom in the PC would just be saying it at random to me. So now, like, if I would walk in the building, a handful of people would go, everybody. And <clears throat> so I felt weird saying it back to him. I would only say it if it, like, came out or whatever. Yeah. Instead of just, I don't know, it would give me douche chills if they said something to me and I said it back. <laughs> douche chills. So, so, so they give me, so they give me everybody and I would go, yeah. And so it was just something that I was saying there. So now fast forward, I'm fired. I'm in TNA. We're doing fact of life. They're like, Hey, you got the dummy button. Um, go in the truck and let's, let's just record you saying dummy a bunch of different ways. Okay, cool. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, dummy, dummy, dummy. Yeah. And just one of those times adding the yeah. And it was like, yeah. okay, that's the one. And so that stuck. So now you got that button doing that all the time. And so every time it would go dummy, yeah, I'd follow it up with another, yeah. And eventually, as we had pointed out, dummy kind of fell away and yeah, remain. You're missing out on a huge opportunity by not having a, a yeah shirt. When is this happening? Uh, well, it's actually in the works. Uh, I think we already came up with one and it should be coming out here in the next, I'm going to say week or two, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, if we were to have a match with LA Knight, sunglasses too, but they don't say, yeah, it's just LA Knight. It's like the ones that I have, but they have LA's on them. Go ahead. Oh, this, is, this is just branding <laughs> brilliance here. I love here it. <laughs> Who is Something the dream bad. match for you? Anybody, <laughs> any era, who's the dream match for LA Knight? Everybody always asks that, and I really don't have an answer to it. I mean, I guess you could take anybody off my Mount Rushmore, Hogan Rock, Austin, uh, uh, Flair. That was the uh, quickest Mount Rushmore I've ever heard, by the way. I, I don't have to think about it. I know. Uh, those are my four. Uh, Hogan, Rock, Austin, Flair. Any of them, uh, you can throw Cena in there. But, I mean, <laughs> the the aim has and, and has always been and still is to be the guy. And to do that, I got to wrestle the champion. So, uh, for me, the dream match is who's got the title? That's the dream match. So, let's do a little speculating here money in the bank you grab that briefcase you are now mr money in the bank how long do you think you want to wait before you cash in well i mean we got to get there first let's let's hold on I, it's already <laughs> happening come on uh i i don't know there, there, there's so many options there i mean you got that brand new world heavyweight championship and that's a beautiful piece of gold um but at the same time i mean what's bigger and better than being the WWE champion and the guy who disrupted years of a title reign. Something to talk about there. That's pretty good. I don't know. I, I, there, there's options. There's options. We'll see. I mean, that's first I got to get there. What's a match of Eli Drake's that people should go back and watch if they're only familiar with LA Knight, but not familiar with Eli Drake. Ooh, baby. Um, uh, I don't even know. You know, I I, I always liked the one with uh, me and John uh, 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 Morrison, Johnny Impact at the time um, from what was that? Bound for Glory 2017. My brain is not ready for all this right now. I can't <laughs> really uh, anything with Eddie Edwards is probably good. Um, yeah. Let's see what was it race for the case or something like that in 2018 that was probably pretty fun i can't remember mm. um i mean you can't beat uh what me and steiner me and scott steiner tagging up so oh, good i mean there's options in there there's some uh photos floating around out there of some of your famous roommates that you've had over the years when you lived in la 
everybody knows that you lived with John Moxley, Dean Ambrose. Who else were some of your roommates? I had famous roommates in LA. Didn't you? Did I? Who did I? Who? Who? Maybe not LA then. Where? Where else was it? I don't know what we're talking about. I'm completely confused. Did you? Did you not live? You didn't live with John Moxley. Yeah, I did. Dean Ambrose. That was okay. Ohio. That was in Ohio. In Ohio. Okay. Okay. I was in LA. Who? I feel like when I came to your place in LA the first time, you were like, "Oh yeah, there's like two other wrestlers that live here" because you had a three bedroom apartment. Oh, so so there was one guy. Okay, so uh, one of the guys was Royce Isaacs. That's uh, right. He used to be in the NWA. He was in the NWA. Uh, Johnny Laquasto, not a wrestler, but a comedian and also a, a wrestling announcer. Former WWE commentator. Yes. Um, so I lived with those two guys for a bit uh back in 2018 maybe 2019 somewhere around there yeah um but yeah that's it john mox is probably the most famous roommate i guess i've had like what what's life like with john moxley dean ambrose i don't think i can get into too many details there uh it was it was a wild time i mean for a little bit for the first little bit, he moved into my one bedroom apartment, which was kind of a familiar thing when I when I was in Ohio. I had lived in multiple one bedroom apartments with other guys because we just we couldn't afford it. So like one guy would post up in the living room, the other one would take the bedroom. Uh, one one time we had three guys in a single bedroom apartment where it was like I was in the bedroom, one dude was in uh, in the living room, and another guy was in what we call the space. And it was legit just the space. Like you'd walk out of my bedroom and then it walked into this kitchen and there was enough space for his twin mattress to stay. And you kind of had to step over the corner of the mattress to get to the, to the, to the kitchen. So that was kind of a familiar thing with Moxley. It was like, I had a somewhat decent place at the time. So he had a little more space in the living room. Eventually we ended up moving into a two bedroom uh, but there was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun nights, uh, a lot of craziness happening in that apartment. Um, we'd, we'd play, uh, we'd like a flag football league we were in and we'd come back and have some beers and stuff. And it was a good time. You are, you're red hot right now, like red hot. I hope you can take a moment to appreciate this. I'm guessing based on the hotel, you, you, are you in London right now? No, no, no. I'm, I'm in Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah. That's, that's not that's quite not London. London. Very similar though. I'm quite. sure. Yeah, very much. Uh, what do I have out here? I've got uh, Big Papa's Interior Demolish sitting right out front. They're they're ready to ready to blast some stuff out here. I guess sounds uh, beautiful. Well, I hope on that long flight over there, you can take a moment to appreciate what's going on right now because this is pretty special, and I feel like you're on the cusp of some even more special stuff happening here. Well, see, my immediate thought is, you said I'm red hot, and all I'm thinking is, all right, that's cool. How can I get white hot? So it, there's always there's. <laughs> So it's a damn progression. <laughs> I ended our last conversation with the same question. Maybe your answers are different now. I'm curious. Uh, I start and end every day saying out loud three things I'm grateful for. So LA night, what are three things that you are grateful for right now? I can do this to me. Um, well, I haven't had breakfast yet today, so I'm kind of grumpy. Um, let me see. Uh, Um, let's see. I'm grateful for, all right. I, I, I feel like I'm going to give you the same answer I gave you last time. You don't know. I don't even remember what the answer was. The immediate thing I first think of is my two little puppies. I think of Herman and Reese and I'm immediately just like, all right, grateful for them. I I'm obviously then I'm grateful for the, my, my girlfriend at home, Michelle. I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, and I guess, um, grateful for my health. I'm in, I'm in damn good condition. So, uh, is that three? That's three. Look at That's that. three. Oh, speaking of health, uh, health, I'd like to point out that uh, LA Knight does not wear two watches. The other one is a whoop strap. I, 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 the same thing. I wore a whoop for years, and people were like, "This idiot's wearing two watches." I'm okay with that though, because I feel like I have seen some people wear two watches, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, this is fashion forward. Screw it, let's go." Yeah, because uh, if anybody could wear two watches and pull it off, it'd be yeah. right. I, I even had a friend say that recently. He was like, why are you, you wearing two watches? He's like, but you can do it. And I'm like, it's not two watches though. But, yeah. <laughs> What's your resting heart rate, by the way? Uh, I'm usually somewhere in like the fifties, I think generally. Yeah. Like true athlete, like the mega star that you are. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I, I, this, this, this machine is well oiled. 
Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good and ready to go. pretty good and ready to go. Well, my friend, uh, thank you for letting me what's, talk what's, to you. What's going on with your 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 fitness journey here? I, I always see you doing some stuff, and of course, you turned me on to a gym during the pandemic when there were no other gyms open. So it, wasn't that unbelievable in LA? There was nowhere to work out. We found this. It was a godsend. Yeah. Speak Easy Fitness, where they just taken all the yeah. equipment, put it into a parking lot. What's the password? <laughs> Oh, put it in a parking lot and put a tent over it and just call it a gym. It was great. Hey, it worked. Yeah, I, I mean, I just turned 40, so my goal was to get in the best shape of my life. Oh, you're old as hell. Then. Shit. Yeah, just like you, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm young. You, 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 there's, there's, there's but, uh, I was working with our friend uh, AJ Sims, Cement Factory. Ah, oh, yeah. And he leaned me right out. It was a uh, 13-week tra uh, transformation, and uh, it, was, it was great. Okay. Look at you. All, all cut up now, huh? Uh, just trying to be like, trying to be like you. I just got really good lighting here. <laughs> perfect. Got, the, got those perfect posing lights. You know how it is. Yeah. So good to see you, my friend. And congrats on everything. Thank you. You too. Well, thank you. I, I'll, I'll attempt to get some sleep at some point in the next uh, the three, uh, three weeks. That's, that's, that's a handful. I, I can hear her crying over here. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she's angry that she's not a part of this interview. What are you doing? I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was not a very good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you give me uh, one? Who me? Yeah. What am I a puppet? Yeah. You, you get one on SmackDown later. What are you doing? All right. I'll see you on SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. See you buddy.